Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. We've got the astronaut complex being built, we've got general construction advanced construction being researched, those will give us docking ports, and my hope is eventually to create a space station that uh, astronauts or kerbonauts can EVA from, because currently I deem it not correct for them to try to EVA from the Lynx spacecraft with the shell on, they can't. But we could leave the shell off, and then they could EVA out of it, but I consider that to be cheaty. So we're going to avoid that, and we're going to have them EVA from a space station. And so we have to wait for all this, but I don't want to just time warp through it. So the most logical thing is to do some interplanetary missions to build up some funds, which we will need in order to buy the station parts, because after all, they are expensive being crude parts. So, uh, but, oops. Uh, we might as well spend some upgrade points in the meantime, uh, since we're doing mainly R&D, though I think the construction of the astronaut complex is dependent on the VAB speed, but we uh, that's going to finish first anyway. So I'll toss some into R&D here, I'll add some more. We'll bring it down to 500,000 for now. Uh, we probably should throw some in the VAB. Okay, so that's what we have right now. And taking a look at our contracts and looking for uh, interplanetary missions. Well, I mean, we sort of know where they're going to want us to go in general. We've done the Venus flyby, so Mars and Mercury are up. But we could do the science day from space around Venus and from the surface of Venus, but they, they don't pay that much. Uh, there is a... Some satellite contracts, but not for Venus. They're both for Mars. Those are very lucrative, but they're in really weird orbits, too. Uh, this is a uh, synchronous orbit, apparently. Stationary orbit. Uh, that's very lucrative. Uh, directly above a particular area. Otherwise, it's not asking for much. This one is the Tundra orbit. So that, but it is a particular orbit that we would have to get into. So lots of Delta V needed, and of course, communication. Uh, I would like to do Venus more because I'm more confident in our ability to communicate to Venus, but these contracts aren't worth it. The Mars flyby contract, there's also the Mercury flyby. I'd have to check what the angle to Mercury is. I think it's, Mercury actually has to be in front of us by 108 degrees or something like that. So, but that, that that's not nearly as lucrative as the combination of the possible Venus, uh, sorry, possible... Uh, Mars missions that we have and we could just do these satellite contracts but they're not very lucrative either the Mars mission those two missions really seem very valuable so let's take a look at the planetary configuration well to be honest uh, Mars is sort of behind us it's not the right time we missed the window for Mars we would have wanted to be about here-ish so right now Venus is in a better position Mercury is not, and Mercury would be really tough anyway. So, yeah, we'll just go ahead with the Venus contract. Um, I really ought to get transfer window planner, but uh, Kerbal Alarm Clock does have the option to give rough transfer windows. They're not the best. So, let's see. I mean, this uh, transfer window is indicating probably the next opportunity. Actually, 554 days is longer than I would expect. It doesn't seem to be giving... I mean, there should be one sooner than that, I would think. But the Mars window is basically next year. We'll just uh, have that in there. I'll, I'll forego the Mercury one. I guess I'll get the next Venus one, but I don't have any faith that's actually giving me the right one. So, but we'll try Venus. And even though those aren't the most wonderful contracts. It's the satellite contracts that don't seem to pop up with Venus contracts. And that's a little bit sad. We could probably get into orbit around Venus. Well, there's this uncrewed Venus landing contract. Well, I suppose... Wow, only two years, though. That's a big failure hit. And I don't know if we can survive entry into Venus yet. 
So maybe we'll discover that here before we take that because that's too big of a budget hit for me to risk that one. Maybe I should, but then again, I am playing hard mode. This wouldn't be so bad in normal mode, so I guess I'll have to take that into account. Uh, maybe I shouldn't change that. So, otherwise this would be a shoe in and I wouldn't even think about it too much. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do the preliminary contracts here. And see what that gets us, and then we'll decide whether it's safe to take that one. After all, at least that one will just hang out, even though it says expires. It'll always be available to us, so that's not a problem. Okay, so I just want to build a Venus mission that costs less than 30000 or so. That should be fine. Let's take a look at the Venus mission we had before and sort of improve upon it. We need a heat shield and everything. And parachutes. So, we actually had the photon stage go to Venus with a goo container. Take off the goo container. But we will need a very small probe core. We have those, so not a problem. Oh, we got the early controllable core. Well, that's a bit heavy in this context, but I'll take it probably. The photon stage is going to have to provide communication support. Let's, let's take take it. Uh, yeah, it's pretty big. We're going to put the antennae of the photon. And we, we probably need relays. We were using these helix uh, direct antennae. They're... And they are the most powerful we've got. And they were able to communicate from Venus. Uh, we'll probably still need them, but they're going to break under dynamic pressure. So I don't know if we have to send science. Yeah, it's science from the surface of Venus. So we would have to have an antenna that could survive while deployed from the surface. And we don't really have that. I mean, um, it depends on how the relay antennae work. Because we can put the helix antennae on here and they can communicate back to Earth. And if the relay antenna can pick up the little probe with its fixed antennae, the whip antennae, for instance, then it'll be all right. But otherwise, we will probably have a problem. Ah, we have new RCS ports. These will be good. They'll save me from having to use a whole bunch of these 40 Newton ports. This is a block of 40 Newton ports in a fairly useful configuration especially for stages, but it'll do fine for here too. A little bit big, but... Got these solar panels unlocked. At uh, Venus, they'll provide s uh, up to 60 watts. I think this probe core requires seven, uh, sorry, 50. So it's tight, but I'm not expecting to need it for very long. So there's that. We will need tanks as well. I'm going to put a small fuel tank in here. Double check that we've got up to the right tech level. Oh, we can buy tech level 3 as well. And of course, we mustn't forget the antennae. And going with the whip antennae in the hope that they will survive. Rated for 20,000 kilopascals. I believe... I believe Venus is at 9,000. Earth is at about 100. Well, we need some science to do. Well, the thermometer should be interesting. I mean, I could make... I uh, get a smaller probe core than this, obviously. This early controllable core is sort of big-ish compared to the CubeSat cores. I think the barometer would also be very interesting. And of course, this is probably too heavy for the photon. Let's see. They were not expecting this sort of thing. 
Uh, that's on the wrong node. That's on the heat shield node. We do not want that. Um, I wonder if there's a way of getting rid of that heat shield node. Let's just occupy it first. Put this on the docking, uh, not the the um, decoupler, and then put that on like that. Okay, so last time we had plenty of delta V, but then we weren't carrying anything more than a goo container. We need the relay and tenai as well. These are the direct ones. Okay, relay. All depends how on how the relay antenna actually works. I mean, at least we can do the scientific data from space around Venus. Maybe we should get the ravioli because that's more guaranteed, or the accelerometer. It's more guaranteed to have some actual results. That doesn't seem like quite enough to me. And boy, does that upper stage look weak. So let's, we're gonna have to revamp this. This had two reaver engines at the bottom. Maybe we need more reaver engines. But first of all, we need a more powerful stage here. We've got three of the ether engines, whose plumes I probably still need to fix. 3.3 kilonewtons. I have that 12 kilonewton thruster. There it is. Let's just have two of these. In case I think it's worth it. And we'll tilt them a little bit so just in case we lose one kind of thing. And it's no longer kerosene though. So it's not as efficient I don't think. Oh and it requires high pressure tanks. We probably don't need these little thrusters like this. We can get rid of these hydrazine tanks and use the new thrusters instead. Well, these are actually not as good as the ether engines. 342 vacuum ISP and everything. The reaver isn't very efficient. I think we can go with these SE2020s. They're more expensive. Not that much more thrust, but much better efficiency. Not so much at sea level though, right? That was one of the trade-offs on one of the previous rockets. I decided to go with the Reavers because they were a little bit better at sea level. Well, then again, these do not ride quite enough. Maybe this very expensive. I mean, we're using two of these. That's 2,900. This is 3,484. Expensive here though. Of course, if this engine fails, then we're in trouble. Which it can. So that's liquid methane now. But lots more thrust weight ratio. It's perhaps a bit too much in this case. It would be beneficial to have a heavier upper stage in this case. Especially since we're getting to a maximum thrust weight ratio of 12.7, basically. I really don't want to use two sure strut engines, but this is not a bad engine. Uh, we'll use the engine 2 vacuum from launcher space. That's 365. That's pretty powerful, but in relation to the first stage, it's not unreasonable. Getting expensive here, though. Well, now we have to watch out. These RCS thrusters no longer have their propellant. Uh, but that's such a high thrust weight ratio for this stage. Well, we're going to make a bigger rocket, darn it. It's a good engine. It's probably going to be a good, one, a good one to stick with for a while. It's got a rate of burn time of 7 minutes. So that's okay. We've even got some data units on it. We'll need the RCS tanks. This stage can last for somewhat less time. Okay, well now we've got a 2 meter straight rocket here. Maybe I should just name it after the bottom engine. Just call the entire rocket the SE2060, since we've got one of those at the bottom. I don't know. At least it'll be clear. Eventually, I mean, I've already forgotten what the configuration for all these 
other named rocket, generic named rockets are. So it's tough to remember which one I might want like that. Okay, well, I think 36 days to build it. It's 8,000 funds. We'll see how it works out. Now the 36 days, that means Venus will be even more out of position. So we'll see whether we can transfer to it at all. Uh, how How is rushing... it's not that expensive. Let me rush it a little bit. But diminishing returns on that. I think I can pull off on 7... Uh, we'll do 17 days. That's fine. Okay, I don't know whether the timing is still good, but we're gonna try it. Launching. Okay, I'm lining up with the moon as is my usual tendency for interplanetary missions. Still a nighttime launch, unfortunately. Well, that'll be close enough. Okay, let's find out. Ball up, SAS on. It's interesting, the electric charge doesn't seem much more than what we've got in the... Does the photon not have additional electric charge? I thought uh, the photon had electric charge inside. Why does it have zero electric charge? Oh, KSV Interstellar messes with that. Ah, uh, it's something... Maybe I need to edit KSV Interstellar to fix that. It makes an assumption about solar panels that isn't necessarily true for everything. Especially, you know, like parts that have solar panels built in, which includes many of Radar Nick satellites as well. So, yeah, that assumption is not a good assumption. Basically, it assumed that they needed electric charge added to them, and the trivial amount of that, and that has caused a problem. So, I'm going to roll this back, and we're going to add some batteries to the stage. Not a whole lot, but we need it to be able to relay in theory, so... Just slapping some of these CubeSat batteries on. Say four of them. Right next to those solar panels. Okay. Save the craft, save edits. Six more hours, and then we have to roll it out again. I do know how to fix that aspect of KSB Interstellar. I just have to remember to make add that patch to RP2000. It'll have to overwrite a file in KSB Interstellar for that. Doesn't, I don't think, cause any problems to KSB Interstellar. It just needs another caveat that needs to check whether there's electric charge on the part first. Okay. SAS on. Startle up. Ignition. And launch. And it's going up. Always a good start. Okay, getting into the high thrust weight ratio portion. Okay, separation and ignition. Risky using two one engine stages. Given test light. Uh, fairing set. And this one has to relight as well. Okay, getting ready for shutdown. And shutdown. 264 by 181. Alright, now can we transfer to Venus is the question. Uh, well, at least it's still behind us. It's positive. Let's just see what Mechjib has to say about it. ASAP 4185. Well, we have it. The 11 minute burn time it's calculating. This stage has 41 seconds left, though. So it's, yeah, it is doing it right. So it is assuming it's only like 36 seconds before the node that we start. But most of the burn is going to be after the node because uh, we've got this long bit to do. And then we'll have fairly little to make any adjustments, so... Yeah, not great. Let's get the antennae out. 
we should make sure this is on hibernate and warp. Right now we're not getting great electric charge. We'll have to see. Okay, getting ready to start. Just making sure the fuel is settled here. And ignition. Okay, and... Next stage. And this stage is lit. Hopefully, hopefully we'll end up with a good approach to Venus after this, because we don't have a lot to correct with. Well, we're shooting straight out now. <laughs> Probably not optimal, but we'll see. We do have interplanetary orbit going on here. Okay, getting close here. At least to the target sun periapsis. See if that means anything. Okay, let's just shut it down there because we're below the sun periapsis and obviously offset because of the timing issues. Uh, it's not really showing a counter encounter right now. Let's say we did a mid course adjustment. What would we need to do? Uh, well, nothing I seem to do will be within our Delta V budget, it looks like. So this one is a bust, I think. Uh, 174 isn't going to make it. Okay, so yeah, we're looking at 480 meters per second here. So we do not have that, unless the little probe has more than I think it does, which I doubt, but it does have some of its own fuel. So we'll give it our best go, since we're trying to kill time anyway, and we'll see what it does. At least we can check out the relay situation. And we do need to worry about the electric charge as well. Well, it doesn't seem to be generating much power right now. Oh, well, it is recharging though, because of the hibernation, so all right. But now it's, okay, so it's recharging at this time warp, and at this time warp, and at this time warp, but then it starts being consumed at that time warp. Ah, uh, is this a KSB interstellar thing? I think so. I remember this in KSB interstellar. Hmm. We'll just have to time warp in the tracking station. So if you're going to use KSB Interstellar, there are electrical issues that need to be taken into account. So anyway, we'll go to the tracking station and time warp. Well, the astronaut complex is complete. Well, now it's easier to recharge. We still have the problem at time warp, uh, high time warps though. Yep. It still consumes at high, well, anything beyond the fourth step. Oh, I passed the node. I was so, so engrossed in the electrical situation. All right. Well, here goes the pro photon, sorry, the photon stage. And let's see about communications. So. Um, let's get the RCS thrusters here. Separation. Okay, and I want to reverse the control point. Um, right. It's fine. And use those RCS thrusters. Oh, well, we might have a lot, but we're not going to be. Um, oh, we're a little bit imbalanced, though. But as we pull away from the other thing, we're going to find it harder and harder to communicate because these little whip antennas, it looks like the relay situation is good, maybe. But these things do not have much range, so we're ultimately going to be way out of range. Well, there's 
our Venus approach coming in there. We can only hope that it orients itself properly. By the time we get there, I don't think. Because oh, we have to worry about electric charge getting... Well, I guess we might not. Maybe we should just go... Up, 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 up. No, 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 no. You don't have to do that. Stop. Stop. 82 kilometers sounds okay. Now we are rotating in sort of a random fashion. That's fine. Let's uh, arm the parachute. And while I'm rotating, I'm going to go surface negative velocity and execute. Oh, it came uh, it stopped rotating. Um, all right, we'll have to time warp in the tracking station because otherwise, if I time warp here, it's going to lose electricity. Wait, well, maybe it won't. Let's see. Um, it's sort of diminishes. See, it's uh, replenishing by 33 here, but here it's only replenishing. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, uh, and then we start spinning. No, no, uh, not right now. Not right now. Bad, bad, bad. No. No. I can't manually. I can fool smart ASS. Maybe. Uh, it's all messed up. We're not going to be able to test anything. All right, I should have gone to the tracking station earlier. We'll... Yeah, no, that's not gonna work. Oh, <laughs> uh, well. So close, so close to at least getting some information about how to enter into Venus's atmosphere. If only the little probe had a better antenna. We could have just put one of those helix antennae on. That might have been good enough. Well, last ditch attempt to accidentally hit. Nah, and we're gonna run out of gas. Okay, this one's doomed. I'm just gonna abandon it. So this this did not work out this time. Let's go to the tracking station and see what our, our next planetary alignment is. But actually, maybe next time we'll be... I mean, it looks like we'll have the advanced construction done. Why Why is Astronaut Complex at 100%? Let me just... Why is it hanging out there? Is it done or not? Hmm, this might be a glitch. Are you done? It seems like it says Kerbals can perform EVAs and we're on the next one, but I don't know why it's still... Oh, it's gone now. Okay, well, momentary glitch. So yeah. The next thing that's going to happen is we're going to have advanced construction and that means that we can potentially, if we have the cash, try and build a space station and do the EVA. I think it would be best to wait until next time for that. So we have a failed Venus mission attempt, Venus landing mission attempt. We will try that again once the window comes up. But for now, I'll just uh, call it, and next time we'll try and build that space station, which will be ambitious. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.